ever dreamed of designing and flying your very own model airplane. Whether you're a complete beginner or just looking to refine your skills, you're in the right place. In this video, I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step guide that covers the big picture of designing your own planes. This overview will give you a clear picture of the process without getting into all the nitty-gritty details or calculations. Along the way, I'll share some references to help you dive deeper. Let's get started. Step 1. Define the requirements. Consider how you want your model to fly. Will it be a glider, trainer, or aerobatic? Think about the speed you want, including cruise and stall speeds. What kind of range or endurance are you aiming for? Don't forget other requirements like takeoff distance or hand launch. Step 2. Study aircraft of the same class. Determine which configuration may best suit your mission. You can use AI tools like Perplexity to quickly find information on similar planes or universes. These tools can help streamline your research, but be sure to cross-check the information with reliable sources to ensure accuracy. Decide on the propulsion method. Will it be electric or gas-powered? Step 3. Select a thrust-to-weight or power-to-weight ratio and wing loading. You can do this by looking at similar models or using rule-of-thumb guidelines. You can visit the RC Planes online website to get the guidelines to select the power loading for the way you want to fly your design. You can check out my video on wing loading for more details. Step 4. Estimate the initial gross weight of your design. You can do this by examining similar airplanes. If you've already selected your components, you can also use a weight buildup method to estimate the initial gross weight. Step 5. Estimate your design's wing area using the wing loading you selected and your initial gross weight estimate. Keep in mind how wing area affects stall speed and ensure that the wing loading you selected will allow you to fly the way you want. Step 6. Estimate the initial tail area and position. For the initial design, this can be done by looking at the volume coefficients of similar planes. The purpose of the tail is to provide stability. You can use software such as Mockup or XFLR5 for a stability analysis. Step 7. Design the wing. Select the aspect ratio, taper ratio, airfoils, wing planform, dihedral, washout, and more. My videos on airfoil selection and wing design can help during this step. Step 8. Sketch initial configurations and evaluate the pros and cons of each. There may be multiple possible designs for the same parameters. You can change the wing position, high, mid, or low wing configuration, as well as the motor or engine position and tail configurations, such as conventional T-tail or V-tail. For example, when designing for a hand-launchable model, high wing placement will be advantageous for ease of handling and belly landings. Step 9. Select your power plant parameters. If using electric propulsion, choose the number of motors, motor KV, battery capacity, and so on, based on the power loading you selected. I found this video by RC Explained very helpful during this step. This video aims to simplify the process as much as possible and provide a good guideline to follow. Step 10. For the chosen configuration, Estimate the center of gravity position. The C.G position plays a crucial role in the stability of the airplane. Step 11. Lay out the fuselage, ensuring there's enough room for the various components. Step 12. Perform stability analysis. In this step, you may need to make changes to your tail or to the positioning of your C.G to ensure the airplane is stable. Step 13. Modify your design for minimizing drag. Add fillets and make the fuselage more aerodynamic or add taper for better lift distribution. Step 14. Do a performance analysis for your design. Step 15. Optimize and refine the design. Remember that aircraft design is an iterative process. Don't hesitate to go back to earlier steps if needed, 
as adjustments can lead to better stability, efficiency, and overall performance. In conclusion, this is just one approach to designing an airplane from scratch. Each designer may have their own unique process and preferences. If you're looking for more in-depth guidance on these individual steps, be sure to check out the videos on my channel where I cover aircraft design in greater detail. For more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. If you found this video informative, please give it a like. Next, you can watch these videos for your aircraft design journey. Thank you for watching and happy designing.